Hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McGandrews from Dread Central, and I'm excited to be joined today by Pete O's, director of Jethica, and two of the film stars, Will Madden and Andy Faulkner. Hello, everyone. How are you? Good. Hey, thanks for having us. Of course. So I've talked a little bit to Pete about the film already, but I would love to hear from Will and Andy how the two of you got involved in in this film. Um, and Will, I'd love to hear from you as you play our our ghostly our ghostly figure. <laughs> yes. So uh, <clears throat> Pete's been a good friend of mine for a few years, and he asked me in about November 2020 to go do a film in the way that he made uh, his previous film called Youngstown that Andy was a writer and actor in where they collaborated and made a movie together. And he told me about that whole process and it sounds awesome, like a dream. And he said, we're going to go to New Mexico in January and do this movie. He had about half of an outline of where the story was going to go. And he's like, you're going to be a stalker and a ghost. And I said, sign me up. <laughs> so for the month of December, I had my work cut out for me. I did, you know, just went to my hole and, and studied <laughs> stalking and pretended to be a ghost. And then... <laughs> And then we ended up in New Mexico to start making it. Incredible. Uh, and then Andy, what about you? Uh, I mean, like Will said, uh, P and I had worked together. We did a feature and we did a short as well. And um, uh, I had lived in New Mexico before this. And I had been talking about it with Pete for years. We, we were friends. And, um, and we always thought it'd be fun to do a movie there. And there were all these great locations that... I sort of knew about, but I especially knew like certain regions. And um, so that was kind of how we started thinking about a setting first. And then um, I, I think I was going to be a ghost, but we weren't really sure. Then we kind of figured that all out as we got there. So I think I didn't really know what I was doing until the cameras were rolling. So, you know. <laughs> I, I've heard about the process of it kind of being like everyone is collaborating and kind of evol like the script was evolving. And I was also curious if either of you, Will or Andy, had any big contributions to the script in terms of ideas, character arcs, anything like that. I mean, yes. OK, oh, I mean, I, I feel like uh, I mean, the way it works is <laughs> it's um, there's like a rough idea. And I think for this movie, there was a rough idea of how to get to maybe the halfway point. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and and what characters maybe introduce, like maybe who's going to play what, and and uh, how this is all going to really rough sketching of of the overall structure of it. Um, but then, I mean, there's also like you know, there's a thing that Pete does where it's like we get to a location and we go to like a thrift store and we get to we kind of choose our outfits and let that kind of inform like who we are and what you know that does a lot of that that does a lot of kind of heavy lifting. To do that and um and that and then we're starting to feel a little bit more and then and then before we shoot we talk about scenes pete maybe writes a rough outline of of uh dialogue and then um it gets kind of reinterpreted through the through the actor maybe changed altogether um and that's kind of how it works and then we discuss where the rest of the movie should go what is an idea what is you know what's a good idea what's a bad idea what's as far out as you could possibly imagine, there's, you know, ideas floated for the end of this movie that are so uh, in outer space. Um, but then everything kind of got brought back. Uh, and I think it, it, for the best, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So I'm curious, what were some ideas that I think I'm curious from Pete that you had that you're like, this could may, maybe this. And then you're like, absolutely not. And you threw them out. Like, were there any like outlandish ideas that you had that you were like, mm, never mind, maybe not for this one? I mean, the really outlandish one. Well, like, so they're like small ones just kind of in the beginning when we're sort of just first discovering it, where it's like, I remember pitching an idea to Ashley of being like, maybe Jessica is like almost like a. I, I was like, she's almost like a James Bond character where she's like got a real plan and she's like, not like a spy, but just that she shows up with a plan and she like, she's really active and this and that or whatever. But then as you kind of like move forward, you've, you've realized that that was not a good idea for just the way like the creative process just works where like, you know, you're always kind of like improv within your own head of what should happen next. And when you eventually get to that point, you realize it's, it's right or wrong. And then you hopefully choose a good direction the yeah. outer space idea was that benny and kevin weren't just going to be friends maybe uh, like maybe they would be lovers 
Oh, <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Now, could this movie have contained that? I, I don't know. Maybe but I'm gonna go a not. little off the rails. But you know yeah. I, sequel. The queer but, but like, gay yeah, yeah. close love story. Yeah, but all wanted. Like what the, the the spirit of 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 it of the like in making this movie is 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 like hanging out with friends. Like that is what we I tried to cultivate. What we all sort of tried to cultivate together. Yeah. You get people together who or have similar tastes, similar sensibilities, the same kinds of things make us laugh or make us interested. And, 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 and then you just can just have fun conversations and like just riffing with each other, just being, you know, oh, like yeah. pitching each other stuff. Cause that's fun to pitch each, th- each other stuff, <laughs> you know, like, Oh, what oh is this? So fun. And then you like, like, that's the most fun shit really. It's like, and then, and then like you get in that mood, that, that rhythm where then you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this, and you're laughing because it feels good to come up with ideas. Not because you're even making a comedy, just because like you like it. You know, like you yeah. like where the story's going and you're in it and it feels good to, you know, discover a path through the woods. Um, uh, and I mean, I think, I think that's what, I mean, the movie has a kind of tone, it has really big tonal shifts and between like humor and horror and, tension and and um it like you know it, it kind of goes across a few genres but i think that's why we go into a kind of comedy world kind of into the second half is because i think when we're pitching ideas when the when the story isn't fully formed yet when we're pitching ideas i think we're just all trying to like make each other laugh so you know the ideas that are inherently more funny kind of rise to the top so mm-hmm. you know we could have leaned into a more horror thing but i think that's just not the way it works when you're just hanging out with friends. It's like, nobody wants yeah. to like really scare the other person. You were just trying to make each other laugh, you know? Right. It's like, imagine yeah. pitching an idea to like, yeah, then you're going to be locked in the closet. Yeah. Yeah. Callie, then you're going to be locked in the closet screaming for your life. As yeah. if, <laughs> like just really agony, pure pain. You're, you know, you're <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you want to do that? Like, no. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'm like <laughs> dead in the water. Yeah. Right. That's not fun, actually. Um, well, I mean, and similarly, like Will, it's kind of like, what are the contributions? Uh, again, sort of in relation to the process of how we made it, where it's like we're shooting the movie in order, we're figuring stuff out as we go, and we're all there, we're all living in this trailer together. But Kevin isn't like in the movie for the first, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. So he's also like, Will's not getting to shoot anything for the first few days. Uh, and so, like, when when Kevin has his big spotlight moment, it's like, Will was ready to act. <laughs> mm. you know, and it's beautiful. And it like is this ends up yeah, being yeah, yeah. like beautiful release of <laughs> this spirit, you know? Um yeah. which I yeah, think well, I, I let me my question for Will because I mean you your character is both like bad guy is very reductive, but like there's he is both a bad character but also sympathetic and there's a lot of really interesting tensions that go on with Kevin and I was mm-hmm. wanting to hear more from you about making Kevin into this creepy but like sad ghost character that you both think is kind of gross but also you feel bad for him want to give him a hug <laughs> yeah yeah I think um I I I I I I went into the, the the deep research hole of stalkers and watched a lot of videos that stalkers make to their victims. And, Wait, you uh, did? Yeah, letters they Ooh, write. That's podcasts. a lot. And, yeah, wow. it's hardcore. So I did that for like a month just because I didn't know anything about stalking. I thought, oh, just a guy who follows someone around and is weird. It's like, what's like the reality of it? What's the whatever? So I kind of found myself at so much, so much of what the people would, would say is sort of so insane and ridiculous that sometimes it's sort of funny and sometimes it's um i found myself laughing in this weird way that i didn't uh sort of understand really but there's something about being so obsessed with something that it it goes to the other side you can't help but sort sort of so appalling and scary that it's funny and um and i think similarly what andy said too like my I think I tend to lean comedic at, in in my acting anyway. So just kind of like, so like the spotlight moment, I think we all learned a lot about who Kevin was, myself included, by just going and going and the kind of triangulating he makes with the universe of why him and Jessica should be together. is like so far-fetched and out of reality that it's, it, it's you don't know how to respond, but to sort of laugh. Yeah. And that's just, 
So it's sort of me copying some of what people really say in real life and then like riffing on it. And then, and then, you know, and then, and then Pete kind of chose to like share more of the sides of Kevin that are really tortured and like, you know, distraught and emotionally, you know, uh, child, childlike and not able to kind of handle anything. Um, so it's kind of hard to then if you try and do share something that truthfully to not sort of empathize with like, fuck, this yeah. guy just needs a hug, you know, and in the way in which it's manifest is, is violent and dangerous to other people. Yeah. At the end of the day, is someone who's ill, very ill and doesn't have the uh, help, doesn't have the resources to get help. Yeah. So that's the sort of two yin yang of the whole thing. <laughs> wow. Yes. I mean, like how draining was that though, to do that research, like looking into that stuff? I mean, I know you said there's like a comedic bent to it a little bit, but that's gotta be so draining to be in that research. It's a fun. It's a lot of fun. It's like, that's, it's like, a, it's, you know, like whether there's something more, sort of morbid or not morbid, it's like what I, what I like to do. I know a lot of actors sort of don't like to, and that's cool. And, how much do you like need to do it or not need to do it to do? I don't really care. I just like, like, I'm just curious. And so I found it to be energizing to, to be, because every, every little thing you read or thing you watch can give you a little kernel of something to like play with and try that have like made it, make it into the movie and of the things that feel most human. It's like from oh. extrapolating from, you know, doing, you know, research, which is just watching YouTube videos and documentaries and stuff. You know? I feel like oh, so much of them, of, I mean, I, I know it's something I was thinking about. I'm sure we kind of all were, but it's, there is like, like a groundingness that we're sort of always kind of doing, knowing we're making this supernatural thing, but kind of like grounding it, humanizing yeah. stuff and not like making a movie situation out of it. Like really kind of like, yeah, like trying to be allergic to that and like, yeah. And, and, and the idea and, and, you know, doing some of, and not as much research as Will did, but, you know, engaging with some of that stuff and be, just having the recognition of how real world women who get stalked are like, they're getting stalked for no reason and they're never free of it. Like the idea that he, the person gets sent to prison, they're still not free. They're just waiting for when they get out and they know he's going to come right back. And, 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 and empathizing with that in a real way uh, is not fun because yeah. <laughs> you yeah. realize like, yeah. oh my God, this is life ruining stuff. This person's never free of it. And then kind of recognizing how it works perfectly with a ghost metaphor and being like, right, they're haunted. Yeah. This works for a story. Um, yeah. And kind of following that. So my final question, this is for all three of you. We'll start with Pete. Do you believe in ghosts for real? Um, I shared, I had a ghost experience. Okay. And I was sitting around a campfire with some friends and we were all sharing our ghost stories. And I, I was like, okay, my turn. And I told the story about this glowing white foggy orb that I saw on this mountain and it flew at me and I, and it dissipated just as it arrived at me. And I screamed and uh and it was an experience like none other i've ever had and then one of the friends sitting around that campfire said i don't think that was a ghost i think that was an alien <laughs> so you're just like i have to go like to like, walk and yeah. think about what you just said to me. Yeah. so me i definitely like i definitely like choose to believe in a world that magical things are possible and happening because it makes life more fun. Hell yeah. All right. Well, what about you? Oh, I would love a ghost experience. I really would. I've never had one. I'm wide open. I'm I'm walking around. Anytime I hear someone like, oh, that's haunted. I'm like, let's go. Come on. <laughs> You're like, I'm going. I want to have an experience so badly. I'm like, please say hello to going. me. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't yet to have one, but I'm 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 all open to it. Bring them on. And then Andy, what about you? I'm probably the most skeptical of everyone here. Just, That's um, fair. I mean, I think, I think aesthetically, it's like they're great, but at the same time, it's like I don't know. It's really hard to uh, believe that you some like somehow your spirit, like your energy, gets left behind, like 
maybe not in the place that you died, but maybe some place that <laughs> you stayed once in a hotel or something. It's just like none of it makes any sense. Until some little kid comes along and helps you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Until some little um, kid <laughs> comes along and he kind of unlocks, you know, you present him the VHS tape uh, that proves that your mother was actually poisoning you. And then you can, and then he can finally present it to your father, you know. At your funeral. <laughs> At your funeral, yeah. At your funeral. Um, and for the record, I also believe in ghosts. I think my house I grew up in was haunted, um, just so I can throw my hat into the ring. I believe in ghosts very much, or I want them to be real, basically, is who knows, but aliens, ghosts, cryptids, uh, I just, I, a mothman, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I believe I believe in aliens. Aliens for sure. Okay, aliens for sure. All right, yeah. cool. That, I get that. They are they are different. the The logic yeah. is different. <laughs> certainly, a re, certainly a re, uh, like an influence inspiration on this movie is the movie Ghost. Um, uh, a wonderful movie, particularly the subway ghost scene where Patrick Swayze gets trained on like how to be a ghost and what be he can do. And like that's like certainly we're riffing on that with with Kevin and trying to, you know, touch things. Um, but as a kid seeing that movie, like, not that I didn't know what movies were, but the way it stoked my imagination. And I then imagined that as my afterlife. And, and, and it honestly made me excited to be dead. It made me excited that like, when I was going to be a ghost, I was going to practice my like ghost power. And I was going to be able to go around and knock soda pop cans out of people's hands. And I was like, that's going to be fun. <laughs> so wait I love that <laughs> that's really cute because I saw poltergeist at a young age and was like I don't ever want to die because I don't want to become that creature in the closet <laughs> right 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 so I was influenced I by the positive that. ghost that's um, amazing cool. yeah. well Pete Will and Andy thank you so much for chatting with me about Jethica and ghosts this has been incredible I really appreciate it